The beautiful and somber city of Edinburgh, Scotland has a rich history. Though above the ground, the city seems elegant and peaceful. Below the city streets lies a dark and extensive past. As we venture into the Edinburgh vaults, we will peer into the history and stories it has to offer. Some people believe that the whole of Edinburgh is one big underground city. Uh, that's not what it is. It's um, all underneath the bridge, underneath the south bridge. It's 19 arches, um, and usually it's three stories uh, down below. So it's very big. It's not the whole city. And not all of those vaults are still accessible. Uh, we only have part of those vaults. The biggest part, but nonetheless, it's still just a part. The vaults were created in the 1780s when the bridge, the south bridge, was constructed. Because when it was constructed, the South Bridge was a very popular project. Many people had to leave their homes in order to, for it to be built. And so they decided to make a luxurious shopping center on either side of the bridge to make it a little bit more popular for people. And well, underneath the bridge, uh, there were vaults that they made that could be used by those businesses as storage spaces and workplaces. For a long time, we found artifacts in the vaults indicating that there were absolutely workspaces there. For example, we found shoes in the cobbler's room, which says that there was a shoemaker there. And there were also popular artifacts, wine bottles and other than that, which indicates that there was wine stored there as well. After the legal businesses, these storage spaces were used for, um, moved out because it was too damp in those spaces, we do believe that criminal activity took place down there because well, they were empty, they were away from prying eyes. So illegal gambling dens, illegal drinking dens. Um, we think that maybe body snatchers may have been there, but we do not have any proof of that because they didn't keep any records of their illegal activities down there. Burke and Hare, they were two immigrants from uh, Ireland and they were looking for employment. They are known now as one of the most famous body snatchers to ever be. However, they weren't technically body snatchers. You see, they didn't actually do what body snatchers do, which is go to graveyards, dig up freshly dug graves, take the bodies from their resting place, and then sell them to the medical school. Burke and Hare actually created their own bodies. They didn't dig them up. They were essentially just serial killers. It was filled with rubble, mostly because the criminal activities were so bad at one point that police um, they just decided to store it all up with rubble. And it was rediscovered much later in the 1980s by a, um, an owner of one of the pubs on Blair Street. And we don't know exactly what happened. We think he wanted to maybe get a basement or get more storage space for his own. Uh, but he started to dig or he found something down because eventually he came upon the vaults. And uh, yeah, that was quite a surprise uh, because they had been lost for, uh, for a long time. But they were then his. And later on, they came um, to the position market who was then able to do tours down there. We have had experiences down in the vaults. The thing is, before our uh, 90s, when we started tours down here, we only did history tours. However, then guests as well as tour guides started to experience things, started to feel things, hear things, see things even. And so we determined that maybe these vaults were haunted, especially when people would experience something that then a few weeks later someone else, totally no connections to the two whatsoever. Um, experience the same thing, which is obviously when we started paying attention and when we started to write those things down um, of the experiences. We've also had mediums come down there um, because we wanted to know if they could feel anything and they have told us multiple stories about people they could sense in there, entities that they could sense in there. But there's one, the most famous one, uh, which is the Watcher. We also think that's the most dangerous spirit that lingers down there. And the Watcher, it's called that because that's usually what he does. He stands in the corner of a room and just stares and glares at everyone who comes in. And we believe that maybe he was a protector of sorts, someone who had to look after the storage that was in those storage spaces for a long time. Um, and he can become active because people have had experiences of 
going out of the vaults and returning with scratch marks and bruises on their backs and necks. I have not had any bruises or scratch marks. A colleague of mine has. She returned back and she told us later on that she had bruises on the back of her neck or in her back. I, of course, seen little things, but you always like to say it's just a trick of the light, you know, it's not real. Used to be a skeptic, full on, but you know, when you're down there enough times, you start to wonder with all the stories around you. You know, maybe you know, there's more to it than that. Yeah, there's many different experiences that people have had, different ghosts, different weird things that they have seen, and uh, well, it's no longer really all that's happened down there, apart from just the legal businesses. Then all of those illegal businesses, body snatchers, and whatever else could have happened down there. Well, it's, yeah, not strange to think that maybe something, you know, from your dead is still there with us.